Now we have done our research and learned a few things about bottle design in the last video, it is time to move on to thumbnailing. As I said before, we are looking to generate both original and coherent visual concepts, not pretty drawing. You're meant to think, and to think pretty hard. I'm drawing old-fashioned bottles based on the references shown in the previous video. You can keep the sketches small and loose. It's the shape, the proportions, and the various components of your design that matter the most for now. When you have more experience, you'll also be able to paint directly. We are going to only sketch for now, and sketching alone allows you to take color and lighting out of the equation temporarily. Then we can add some value and work out our color palette before we move on to the blocking. Working with a traditional method is also a good way to make the process simpler so you don't have to think about the program's functionality and look for certain ways to manage layers and all. However, if you are very comfortable with Krita, you can feel free to use it to its full potential. Again, what matters is the ideas, not the way you do it. I did a few concepts in Krita, but afterwards I also did more on paper, so we are going to look at these. You have a selection of pen sketches right here. I made them from a cafe where they were displaying lots of glasses and cups, which was a really good source of reference for me. You can see how the first ones have simpler shapes and they also have a pretty thin layer of glass, but the ones at the bottom have a thicker amount of glass and they tend to lean towards more old-fashioned bottles and pots. I think you can clearly see the evolution from the ideas, the first ones at the top of the sheet, to the more elaborate ones at the bottom. And this is what concept art is all about. You want to take the bad ideas out of your mind and to generate more and more original ones as you proceed forward. Next, I invite you to do at least a larger drawing in three-quarter view to get an opportunity to think about the volume and the form of your potion, and also about how the liquid is contained in the bottle. I took a few design decisions myself to make the bottle look more cartoony. First of all, it has a fairly large base. It's a pretty unusual silhouette for a bottle, but it's inspired by the tools you would see in chemistry. Then it has very thick glass, especially at the bottom, which is not very realistic. It is also plugged with a cork, which is going to give it that old-fashioned look. And last but not least, it has a large body and a fairly short neck. All of that, together, makes for a stylized magic bottle. So now we have the general idea. It is time to experiment with proportions and to generate a few variations. This is a good time to start experimenting with selections and transforms, which we have studied in chapter 2. The goal of making these variations is to refine the best idea that we have and that already works. For each game asset that you are going to make, it's interesting to make a few variations to be able to pick the best one. There are two ways you can create variations for your concepts. For one, you can play with its proportions, so you can extend the neck or the base of the potion, like I'm doing, or you can also add different elements. You could add a different cap, a more creative one, add a handle or something else, whatever you want. That is why it's good to work with selections and transforms. They are very good at that. Also, don't hesitate to sketch new elements that you will add on top of your existing design. This can be very useful. Now it's time to pick one to three bottles that we like and to create a color composition. You can pick the colors, the lighting, and establish your value composition at that point. It's up to you. I decide to only add the colors and to make two versions. One is in red and the other one is in blue. Very classic colors for magic potions in games. In general, you have red for the color of blood and life, and blue for the color of magic and mana. As you've already seen in the previous videos, I decided to go with the blue one, but you can be creative here. You can go with purples, with greens, with yellows, with oranges. It's really up to you. You create the color code you want in your game. You don't have to go with the standards here. 
There is a reason why I chose blue. This is due to the fact that at that stage, I know that I want a cork, which will be between brown and orange. And I also want to add some rope. I'm going to add at the blocking stage, but I know that it will have some tint of orange as well. Blue and orange are complementary colors. They work very well in conjunction to one another. To wrap up the thumbnailing process, I invite you to make detailed sketches. This could be considered as part of the blocking, as we are going to use the outline of those drawings as guidelines to block in the asset. But to me, this is still design work, as we still have to take important decisions on the form of the potion, but also on the angle of the camera. We are also doing two potions that feel most relevant to the project, and then we will move on to blocking and only pick one to create as a game set. I decided to make the potion viewed from above at a slight angle as it seems natural that way, as if someone had placed it on a counter or a table for the player to grab as a reward. For the most part, it's just like the initial thumbnails, but it's a bigger version with cleaner outlines and a bit of volume. Also, this is the first time I use the liquify tool to sculpt the shape. This is a tool I invite you to use as well in Krita, and I will show you how I use it in more details when we get past the blocking. 